Dear creatives, welcome to another interesting online tutorial. My name is Adjela from Allured by Ruby. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a beautiful turban with the front ruffles. Okay, the beauty of this turban is the height of the ruffle in, in front of the turban. And I'll be showing you how to achieve that height. You know, the ruffle in front of it has to be a little bit high, depending on how you want it to be like. So here are the few items required for this project. I have my um, fabric right here, and this is a stretchy fabric. All right, you can use any fabric, but this fabric is different from a scuba fabric because it's stretchy, but it's not as thick as scuba. And if I remember correctly, the guy called it um, combat material. You can verify with your retailer or your tailoring uh, materials shop owner if it's actually the same for you in your area. Combat material, that is the name of this fabric right here. You can still go ahead and use scuba. It also is it's actually going to work fine as well. And I also have this um, pleated fabric right here which I'll be using for my ruffles and this is one yard and this also is one yard now you can decide to use this for your um, turban base and also for your ruffles it depends on whatever it is you want you can just go ahead and play around with the fabric with the design just make sure that you practice that is the most important thing all right so I'll be using this for my turban cap and I'll also be using this for my ruffle you can decide to do it likewise it depends on you i have my matching thread right here and i have my hand sewing needle which is the big type and i have my trimming right here now each of this trimming here this one here is um 500 naira and this pair is a thousand naira so many times when you you want to make a turban for someone go ahead and cost your materials before you give the person the price so you don't shortchange yourself the beauty of the turban most times is not actually the base is the embellishment and the feathers and the trimmings and everything put together sum up um, a beautiful masterpiece so let's get started welcome back so i have my fabric right here cut I'm sure you all know that for every top band, there must be a band and also a base. Now, we are going to be making a round front um, band for this top band design. And my band right here is 4 inches by 22 inches. Now, the total length of this, as it is, is 22 inches long. Okay? This is 22 inches right here. And this width right here is four inches on fold here I'm going to be having 11 inches that is 22 inches divided by two and I'll put this aside now for my base my base is also on fold right here as you can see and this base is going to be longer than the band I will explain to you why but well, first of all the length of this base right here is 20 seven inches you can make it 26 inches but you can still make it 27 inches depending on how you want the back of your turban to drop all right i will show you that um in few minutes but before then the the depth of this turban right here okay um like i was saying i said the length of this is 26 inches or 27 if you're using 26 inches you're going to be having 13 inches on four that's 26 inches divided by two if you're making it 27 inches you're going to be having 13 and a half just like i have right here you can use both measurements it's fine now for the depth of the stop and that's how wide is it it's 20 inches wide don't forget this part is the width and this part is the length it's looking shorter because it's on fold if i open this up right here you are going to be having 26 or 27 inches okay long and you have 20 inches wide all right and that is that for my for my um turban base now from this folded part right here i will just need to get the midpoint okay i want to divide this into two and since both edges are properly aligned meaning that because they are equal this way this part becomes my midpoint and i'm just going to do a little notch right here so i can know that that is the middle 
of this base and i'm going to do the same also for the um for the base i'm going to go ahead and fold it into two now this fabric has the right and the wrong side this is the wrong side and this right here is the right side and i'm going to fold it with the wrong side facing each other so i can have this part as my right side and also this back two as my right side and i'm going to fold it into two equal parts so i can have my midpoint also and make sure that the edges are properly aligned so you can get an appropriate mark okay so i'm going to fold it this way and then i'll get my midpoint from here i'm going to notch this part right here a little and then i'll be opening up my base don't forget always look out for the right and the wrong side this is the wrong side and this is the right side and i'm going to place my base i'm sure you are already familiar with this um, part if you have been following our top band classes now i'm going to just go ahead and pin the midpoint to the midpoint as it is right here and i'll use my office pin to hold it in place before i join i have my office pin right here and i'm going to just go ahead and attach it together using my office pin and then take it to the sewing machine right here and i'm going to sew it to make sure i secure the band and the base together welcome back dear creatives now i've joined my base to my band and i came in right here by half inch okay do not let your seaming or your stitch exit to um half inch rather all right so you can still have enough um allowance from here to here for your band now the reason why i ask you to notch your midpoint is because don't forget this particular um, base right here is 27 inches and the band is 22 inches if you minus 22 from 27 you are going to be having um five inches left over all right now for you to have excess fabric at both ends that are equal you need to get your midpoint now because i've gotten the midpoint and i've attached this could be two and a half inches right here okay can you see same for this part right here i'll be having two and a half inches i hope you're seeing this all right so i've successfully shared the five inches to the edges right here okay so you don't have one part of your um of your of your turban longer than the other parts now i'm going to remove my pin right here don't forget to always use your office pin to hold it in place it's very important except you can do it perfectly without moving all right so your stitch does not shift or your base rather um so now this is how it looks and if I flip this open, I'm going to be having this right here. Now I'm going to flip my, my base this way and I'm going to just fold it. Now the reason for this excess two and a half inches on both sides, it's very simple. I'm going to explain. Now because this type of turban is going to be pleated both front and back i don't want to jump to that part right now but the truth is if you are plating a turban front and back you need 20 inches long reason being that you need 20 inches long because ordinarily a normal turban depth shouldn't be more than probably 10 or 12 depending on how deep you want it to be but we are making this 20 inches deep because we are going to be pleating both front and back okay and now because we are pleating front and back if it was to be only back okay i'm going to be making my turban base the same size as my band right here but because i'm pleating front and back i need allowance because by the time i pleat this back right here and i also pleat this front right here it's going to be too tight just imagine that i cut this the same size as the band it's going to be too tight and it will be too small it might even be difficult for you to put it on your head but this excess allowance both on the side here and the depth here will allow your top band fit 
appropriately even after plating front and back if you are not plating the front of your top band don't bother adding don't bother making this part 20 inches all right you can just make it about about 10 to 12 if you're only placing the back now at this point i'm going to just go ahead and close up my band from here coming in by half inch here and when i get to this point i'm going to take my stitch down to this part continue on half inch seam down to this point okay and down to this point and i'm going to be leaving one and half inch I'm going to be leaving one and a half inches right here I'm marking it right now this color of chalk is almost the same as the fabric so it's not going to show so you can go ahead and mark it with something more visible so you can see so this is my one and a half inch right here so don't forget i'm going to close it up from here coming in by half inch take your stitch down continue on half inch seam down to this point and stop right here okay so um now that i've joined this part right here i've closed it up and i actually forgot i was going to leave one and a half inch right here so i actually joined everything then later i realized i was supposed to leave one and a half and then i opened it back so i have my opening right here which is one and a half okay and i have my needle and thread and the thread right here is four lines okay you can even make it thicker you can make it like six or eight lines depending on how thick but this is thick enough to hold my pleats so I'm going to start pleating from this part right here. Do not pleat on the band parts. Start pleating from this part right here. And then I'm going to do my pleats this way. Now, please take note that I used my shear scissors. If you don't know what a shear scissors is, it's also called a zigzag scissors. I use it most times when I'm not weaving the inner parts just to give it a neat finishing inside if you have a saja or a weaving machine you can go ahead and weave the tip right here it's also fine but in the case where you do not have a saja you can use your zigzag scissors just to trim the inside so you can have a neat finishing so i'm going to be pleated from this part right to this point um right here just the same way i'm doing and like i always say do not pleat on top of your sip don't pleat on the line right here pleats above you can pleat on top of the line but let it not be below the line you still allowed for you to pleat on top of the line but don't take it below the line so i'm going to pleat this right here So I'm going to stop at this corner right here and then I'll tie a knot. Okay, now I'm just going to close it up. You can take it one more time if you want to. It's optional, all right, just to make sure that you properly secure it. But I'm going to tie a knot right now. And I'm going to tie it twice. Cut the excess thread if you notice I'm not cutting it too close to the edge right there because I want to finally stitch it um, I want to finally tie it so you can I can secure it permanently so you don't have the case of your thread coming off so I'm tying this and I'm going to tie it twice I always do this for every um, pleat or for every notch then I'll tie. Now this is how it looks right here and we are almost getting ready. And then I'm going to go to my loop. Now the loop for this turban is very long and that is going to form the base for um, our ruffles. Our ruffles is going to be, like I said, is going to have some form of height. It's going to be tall in front and you need something 
beneath it so you can be able to attach your ruffles on top of it so it can give it that height now i'll put this aside and i have my fabric right here which is this is about 64 inches long let me put it on fold so i can measure for you to see it's actually 64 they're about and about seven inches wide but i have my measuring tape here to be sure and this is seven and a half inches wide and on fold it's about 32 inches that is 64 inches so this is 32 inches on fold and it's 60 four inches when it's spread out and what i'm going to do very quickly is just to make sure that i check for the right or the wrong part this is the wrong part and here is the right side and i'm going to place it with the right um right side facing each other this way and i'm going to take it to the sewing machine and close this part all the way down close it up here and stitch on the sides all the way down to the other edge Make sure you leave the other parts open right here. Leave this part open because you are going to be turning this inside out. Welcome back. So now that I've attached the two edges together and I've closed it up. Now from this closed end, I'm going to cut out the excess fabric right here. And cut this part in a diagonal way this way. So by the time I flip this inside out, I'm going to be having a fine sharp edge right here. So I'm going to pick up the other parts here and then start to turn it inside out. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this all the way through down to the other edge. And when I'm done, I will show you what to do next. All right, so I've turned my my loop inside out all right and i'm going to flip this turban cap to the right side this way okay so this is the back this is the pleated back and this is the front this is the center front now from the center front i'm going to just use my hand to pleat this way till i get to that 1.5 um opening that i have at the back right here okay and then i'm going to fit my loop this way i'm going to use the open parts just fix it inside make sure it enters appropriately it's not too nice for your hole to be too wide so 1.5 inch is okay and then i'm going to go ahead and take this to the sewing machine this way and i'm going to sew across it all right so i've just stitched this part together to hold the loop in place now if you notice that it's not too tight okay i still have um some allowance in between the loop right here and this is the reason why i said you should make your base 26 because this is the band part which is 22 if your base is also the same as your band it's going to be smaller it's going to be smaller and your toba will not be looking very nice so you need that extra bulk for the depth at the back all right and now that i have um i've joined my loop together at this part i'm going to cut please take note you are not cutting this off you are cutting only this excess fabric on this part right here so i don't have that bulky part I don't need it anymore i just have to cut it out this way okay and i still have the whole length of my loop right here so quickly i'm going to fit this on the dummy head and then we are going to attach this is going to form like i said earlier this is going to form the base with which our ruffles will stay apart because of the height of the ruffle so i'll take you to the um, dummy head right now and I'll show you how to attach this and then we'll move to our ruffles. Welcome back dear creative. Now I have my turban on my dummy head right here and I'm going to be gluing this um, loop down. Now I want you to understand that it is not a must for you to finish this whole full length. As long as you discover that you have enough wrap 
okay you have enough if you do not want your your ruffles to be too high okay you can just reduce the length of your loop right here it's not compulsory for you to use the length used in the video so i have my hot glue gone right here and i'm going to be twisting and at the same time gluing it down the same way okay so i'm going to start from this point right here just attach little glue because you don't want your glue to be showing right underneath so i'm going to take it this way hold it down for it to dry and i'm going to be turning my mannequin as i do don't forget to twist and then you glue hold it down for it to dry and then I continue twisting. I think I'm going to be taking this down like twice. I've done it the first time. I'm going the second time right now. And I'm going to glue this part right here. Okay, I think this height is enough for me. And so I'm going to just cut out this excess right here. And then I'm going to glue it down. Make sure you hold it for it to dry appropriately before you let go and when it's finally dried i'm going to show you how to do your other ruffles with this fabric right here don't forget this is just like a base which our, our other ruffle will be on top okay but you can decide to use this also for another design this is actually going to give you another beautiful design as you can see if you do not want to attach this other fabric right here but for this um, for the sake of this class, we are going to be attaching another ruffle into, on top of it. Welcome back. So I have my other fabric right here that I'll be using for my ruffles. And this right here is unfold. It's unfold right now, as you can see. And the length of this fabric is by 60. But because it's unfold, it's going to be by 30. So this is by 30 right here. And the width of the fabric is about 15 and a half inches. Okay, and I need one piece for this, depending on the end result. If you discover that it's not full enough for you, you can decide to use two pieces. Okay, but I'll be using one for this project. And what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine right here. Now, this is the right side. Okay, this right here. Is the wrong side so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine fold it with the right side facing each other this way okay and I'm going to just go ahead and stitch on it close up this edge right here and cover up the edges straight down till I get to the other edge okay I'm going to leave an opening right here for me to be able to turn this fabric inside out welcome back so now i've turned my fabric inside out okay this is the wrong side now and this right here is the right side so i've turned it inside out so quickly i'm going to take my hand sewing needle and thread and then i'm going to make my ruffles there are different ways you can make your ruffles you can either go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and just do a gather stitch in between right till you get to the end and pull the gather stitch so you can have your ruffles or you use this method um, that I'm about to use just go ahead and fold um, your ruffles right here use your um, your needle and your thread just push it inwards this way I 
and then pull it out take it back again the reason why I'm struggling to put this because I have it bulky in between. So you might need to take your time to put this inside for it to get through to the other side. And you can also take note of your needle just in case your needle is not sharp enough. So I'm just going to put it in between. okay this is how it looks i've secured this point right here and then i'm going to go ahead and make the second pleat holding it in place don't forget one two and then i'm going to bring it back I'm bringing it back forward so I can have um, enough thread to pass it inwards this way. Just take it to the next ruffle, push it in. Pull it out and take it back to where you took it from. Meaning that I'm going to push this backwards. Pull it out to secure it in place. That is why I'm taking it in and out multiple times. Okay, so I have one fold right here. And this is the second fold. And then I will do the third fold this way. Just pass it through in between. Out. Take it back in. And then bring it back forward. Okay, so that makes it three. One, two, and three. I'm going to continue like that till I get to the end. Okay, this will make it the fourth pleat. This will make it the fifth pleat. And then I will just end it right here. So quickly, I'm going to go ahead and continue pleating the same way I have done this three pleats right here. Just hold it in place, put your needle in and out. I'm taking it back. Still the same method I've been using from the start. Then I'll bring it backwards. Now this ruffle doesn't have to be perfect because it's a ruffle at the end of the day you can still need you still need to adjust with your hand while you are gluing this down so quickly i'm going to go ahead with the other pleats and then when i'm done i will show you what to do next now this is the last part i'm just going to be tacking it towards the edge right here okay there's no big deal i'm still going to be tucking this in okay while i'm gluing i'm going to cover this up so it doesn't really matter if it's showing right here or not so the way it is right here, I'm just taking it back. Okay, so I'll bring it back forward this way. And then I will just tie a knot. So I'll go ahead and cut out my excess thread and when I'm through I'll show you what to do next okay um, now I have my dummy head and don't forget this is our base 
okay and here is my ruffle right here like i said your ruffle doesn't have to be perfect okay so i have it right here and this is how it looks so i'm just going to be placing this right on top of this base right here you're going to be doing a lot of gluing at this point okay so just place it on top and then i will just go ahead and glue this mid part right here just to make sure that i hold down the center point okay i'll just glue it down like i said you want to achieve the height so i'm going to hold that in place properly for it to dry now the beauty of your ruffles is when it's looking hand tied or hand arranged okay the more um imperfect it is the more beautiful it will come out so i'm holding this in place and then i'll start to arrange now don't forget this part right here has to be covered and i'm going to start from there so i will just start using my hand to cover it up i will just glue i'm going to be doing a lot of gluing right now so for this part here i will just cover it up by gluing it down make sure your glue does not touch the edge it's very important so i'm gluing that down hold it in place for it to dry making sure that i'm gluing down all the under parts here just to cover it up properly so i'm going to use this to cover it down okay so that when it flips you don't see anything underneath so i'm holding this in place for it to dry so i'm going to go ahead and cover up this part don't forget i'm starting out with the underneath so that when you raise your head you don't see the base so i'm holding it down if you notice when it's up this way cover it such that you don't see the base right here so i'm going to continue to the side And I'm going to hold it in place for it to dry also. So now this part is up to you. Okay. The most important thing is for you to get the technique of which it has been achieved. And then you can go ahead and try your own. And even as you go ahead and try, you can decide to form your own design. It is not a must for you to do it the same way that I did mine. So I'm trying to cover up this side. Okay, trying to cover up this back part so I'm going to just glue it down this way just trying to cover it up okay hold it in place for it to dry and when you have successfully covered up all the base parts, then you can start arranging your plates. So for this part, I'm going to cover it up. Okay, for this back part, I'm going to cover it up properly. I've moved to the side now this is a stitch here this is that open part and I'm going to be hiding it underneath I'm going to be hiding it
okay so as it is i've covered all the edges right here so by the time you flip this open you're not seeing the base underneath okay you're not seeing any base behind okay and then you can then move to your ruffles and then i start to arrange my ruffles the way i like depending on how you want them to be and you're going to be gluing them down you can decide to glue them to each other just make sure that it's staying properly what i mean by that is you can decide to glue this part to this part if that is how you want it to look like like i just want it to have like a round shape okay so i can just glue this part together but in your gluing please take note not to attach your glue to the tip so by the time you press it on the other fabric it does not come out and once it dries it's going to show okay just be careful at that point okay so you can arrange your pleats the way you want them to look like it depends on you Like this one right here is looking loose. You can just decide to flip it, turn it. And glue. So that's a technique for making your ruffles have height. So you can just use your hand to pleat, to style and just glue down when necessary okay so as long as your base is properly attached you can decide to style this anyhow you want and for me i'm just styling this the way i want it to look it doesn't really need to look perfect okay so this is how it looks you can decide to attach gemstones to your turban ruffles you can just embellish it whatever it is you like it depends on you okay so as it is even when you are moving okay it's not flipping make sure you secure that So you can just use your hand to you know flip it so you can know where and where needs gluing okay so this part here needs to be glued down and i'm just going to glue it down this way so when i flip it it's not coming up Okay, so you can just go ahead and try play with your fabric try something new try it yourself just do something go ahead and practice drop your comments your questions just in case I've skipped anything that you do not understand and I really hope that this class is well detailed and explanatory for you to go ahead and try just whenever you are free to do that all right so it's looking good it's looking nice okay and um we are almost through with this class so what is left is optional you can decide to attach your glue um your embellishment to any part so i think i'm going to be embellishing just one side this way but let me quickly get my scissors because i'm going to be using one of this piece welcome back so there are two ways in which you can attach your gemstones you can either tack it in or you can glue it down all right so gluing it down is a faster method all right but um tacking it it's also fine and if you want to glue it down uhu is not appropriate because of the weight of the gemstones okay except you are gluing something like that that means that when the person washes it off it's one time it's going to come off 
so a safer way is to tack it in or you can decide to just use your hot glue to attach this so i'm going to be just i will just glue this down this way very close to my ruffle and when you are attaching your glue do not attach your glue close to the tip right here because by the time you are trying to press it in for it to stay you are going to have spill out the glue will spill out to the sides and it will just mess up your work so i'm going to just go ahead and attach this right here gently to the side making sure that you have already set where you want to put it because once you place it on it there's no going back and this right here is perfect for me so i'm going to hold this down for you to dry properly and then i'll show you how it looks like all right so here is my turban very beautiful this is the front view and this is the height okay this is the side view with the embellishment and here is the back you can decide to tuck this in if you do not want it to come out and this is the other side right here so quickly I've shown you how to make this in few steps and I hope to see your practicals, okay? Go ahead and drop your questions, your comments, just in case I've skipped anything. All right, thank you so much for joining in in today's class. My name is Ajela once again. See you next class. Bye for now.